not such a bad day to talk about leaving the planet, huh? Yeah, uh, no, very appropriate, actually. <laughs> Big crowd, too. Wow, this is great. So um, thank you all for having us here. Um, as I said, I'm Derek Mead. I'm joined with uh, Mike Massimino and Naveen Jain here. Um, so Mike, we're going to talk about space. Mm -hmm. I think we should go to, face, uh, go to fa uh, space first. So what's it like? As an astronaut who's been there, what is it? Uh, you're sitting in, the, sitting in the shuttle. What is it all about? Yeah, uh, for me, and, and thanks everyone for, for coming. It's a pleasure for, for I think, all three of us to be here. And mm -hmm. uh, certainly for me, this is a, it's great being a part of this. So, But yeah, to just share a little bit uh, of it. And uh, I have a, a new book that, uh, that came out a month ago that I, I, I talk a lot of, uh, about, about these experiences. But the launch um, is... is uh, is an, is an amazing experience. I mean, w the word amazing really doesn't sum it up, and I, I try to talk about my emotions. Uh, people ask me a lot of times if I was scared going into space, and that was the time I was really scared. Right before the launch, uh, being out there with a fuel rocket, uh, it looked like a beast. It looked as if it was alive, and it was making really strange noises, and it was nighttime. It was a night launch, my first launch. And standing there looking up at the rocket ship, I thought to myself, maybe this wasn't such a good idea. <laughs> you know, that's, it, it crossed my mind that I probably should have thought this through a little bit more, but it was too late. And I got on, and once you start moving, you accelerate from zero to 17,500 miles an hour in eight and a half minutes. And the, the feeling of it was just, I, I could not believe that people can create something so powerful. The amount of power it takes to leave the planet and to go to orbit you know, not as much as to go to the moon, but that amount, the amount of power below you as you're moving is, is, is beyond what we really, I felt we could control and either it was going to be a good day or a bad day. And then after eight and a half minutes, the engines cut and you know, I, I took my helmet off and floated right in front of me and everything quiets down and you're floating. And then the view of the planet is extraordinary. Um, the altitude I was at, at at Hubble were 100 miles higher than the space station. You can see the curve of the planet. Mm -hmm. And being outside, once you're in this, you, know, you launch in this spaceship and you're kind of still inside the first few days, you're looking out through a window. When you go out to spacewalk, I really felt like I was in space. You know, you're not inside of the spaceship anymore that you launched in. Now you're outside and the only thing around you is the universe. And you can see the curve of the planet. And again, words don't, uh, don't give it justice. But my, my feeling was when I really had a chance to look at it, I thought to myself, this must be the view from heaven. If you, that's how beautiful it is. If you could be in heaven and look down on our planet, this is what you would see. And I dwelled on that for a moment, Derek, and then I thought, no, no, it's, it's more beautiful than that. Mm -hmm. This is what heaven must look like. <laughs> and I can only imagine what heaven might be and what it might look like, but I can't imagine anything more beautiful than our planet. It is a paradise, yeah. and we are very, very lucky to be here. You can see the beauty of our planet, this paradise, and I could turn my head and I can see the vastness of the universe, realizing that there's no safe haven anywhere close. So hopefully there is somewhere else, but yeah. we're very lucky to be here. I mean, you're going to make me tear up here, so you're going to be careful. Good. <laughs> Thanks. So, Thanks. It's amazing. Hmm. So we're talking about the vastness of the universe. Um, and so Naveen, being a space entrepreneur, I mean, what is the opportunity that's out there? I mean, why are you even thinking about going off the planet when there's so much here to go everywhere else? Well, you know, going to the moon really is not about just going to the moon. This simply showcases that a small group of people are now capable of doing things that only the superpowers could do before. So imagine when we land on the moon, not only we become the first company ever to do so, we become the fourth superpower. And it just goes on to prove the next set of superpowers are going to be the entrepreneurs. It's not going to be UK, Germany, or France. It is going to be one of you and one of us who is going to make the next dream come true. So to me, the, it is the moonshot. But my hope is that this, this is like a four-minute-a-mile problem. Once we can show that entrepreneurs are capable of doing anything that they can put their mind to it, I believe there's going to be one of you who is going to take another moonshot, whether it's a cure for cancer, the cure for Alzheimer's, or the cure for Zika. Every one of you have now a chance to be able to achieve every moonshot that you can dream of. In fact, I will tell you that we're living in the most amazing times in the human history. In the next 10 years, we're going to change the trajectory of how humanity lives. We're going to be able to disrupt 
the healthcare. We're going to be able to find insights into your body to be able to personalize the diet and nutrition. We'll be able to understand the ecological system that we have as a human being. We are only 10% human and 90% bacterial. In fact, 90% of our cells in our body are bacterial cells, only 10% are our own. So irrespective of how proud we are of who we are, we are simply a beautiful container for parasites. Now, coming back to the moon, really is that, you know, in some sense, when you go look at the moon, it simply is about, in fact, bringing the world peace. And what I mean by that is, Think about what we fight over. We fight over land. We fight over fresh water. We fight over energy. And all you have to do is look up. And we have abundance of land. We have abundance of energy. And we have abundance of water. Only thing is we believe somehow it is not accessible and affordable. So imagine today, I'm telling you that our mission to the moon that we are launching next year, is cost is going to be under $7 million. Not $700 million, under $7 million. And the reason we chose to go to the moon is to just to rephrase John F. Kennedy. We chose to go to the moon not because it's easy, because it's a good business. And what makes it a good business? <laughs> uh, is there is unbelievable amount of natural resources on the moon. Mm -hmm. So there is, you know, 16 quadrillion worth of minerals from rare earth elements to platinum grade materials are to helium-3. And a small quantity of helium-3 could power this planet for generations to come. But it's not that. What if we just bring the moon rocks back? And imagine we can disrupt the diamond industry. Diamonds are not rare on this earth. The De Beers simply made them a symbol of love. And what's more symbol of love romantic than the moon? So imagine when we bring the moon rock and we change the paradigm and make the diamond a commodity. Everyone gives someone a diamond. If you love her enough, you give her the moon. So don't <laughs> promise her the moon, give her the moon. <laughs> That is, <laughs> like, that is quite an image yeah, right and, there. So. And one last thing yeah. is, when we start to take yeah. people yeah. to the moon, mm -hmm. we're going to change the paradigm where the honeymoon is going to be about taking your honey to the moon, <laughs> not taking your honey to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty good. So um, talking about the moon now, yeah. I mean, we have so many things that we need to deal with on Earth, right? And it's interesting to bring up JFK and the original yeah. space race and moon shots and everything. I mean, why is space? important when we know we have so many things we have to fix here. I mean, what is it? Why do we need to keep going? Well, I think, you know, some of the things uh, that uh, Veen talked about for business opportunities, but I think also from just a perspective of, of understanding where we are and what is out there, um, you can make an argument from the government side of it, you know, what we spend our tax money on as a space agency, mm -hmm. whether it's European Space Agency or a Russian Space Agency, Canada, Japan, China, the United States, wherever the spacefaring countries, you know, you have a lot of it, a lot of things you need to spend your money on, and I think that the space program, what it does for the future, what it does for international cooperation, um, inspiring young people, technological development, I think it is worth that investment, um, and I think more than that, though, it increases our understanding of what's out there. Mm -hmm. The the my my uh, missions with the Hubble Space Telescope which I think is the greatest scientific instrument ever built. I'd agree, actually. It, it, it's, Anyone it's else amazing. agree for this one, right? It's, am, it's yeah. amazing what the Hubble can show us. <laughs> you know, recently it showed us that there's evidence of water on, on one of Jupiter's moons on Europa. It's, it's a couple weeks ago discovered that there are 10 times as many galaxies in the universe that we previously thought were there. So the, the increase of understanding of what is out there of giving way to what we, what we can even imagine is there, not just answering questions, but developing new questions, things like what is dark energy and what is dark matter. We don't know what these things are yet, um, but we've discovered that they exist. I think that's what the, the space program can give us. And I think those are the benefits, things like inspiring young people, international cooperation, technological advancement, exploration. I, th I think that is all worth it. And I yeah. think what's very exciting is what, as you say, the entrepreneurs. I, I'm a professor at Columbia now, mm -hmm. and that's what I, no longer with NASA. And the students I have are very excited. Some of them want to go work for their, for their government space program. Some of them want to go work for some of the big 
companies. But I think the exciting thing is, is some of these private companies, some of the entrepreneurial companies, young people like the idea of being entrepreneurs. You can change the world now, as you say. Yeah, I mean, and he also thinks space is really cool. And so by being a space entrepreneur, they can be entrepreneurial and then they can explore space at the same time. So I think we're at, I agree with you. I think we're at this golden age now where we're now at, I think, finally, hopefully at that point where the, you know, the, the governments can kind of hand over a lot of that development, a lot of that excitement through things like the internet and, and Twitter and social media, we're able to share more about what's going on and get lots of people excited so it's not just a small amount of people that can partake in it and everyone can get involved and contribute. So I think we're at a, a very exciting time. So I think that investment that the government makes or that these private companies can make, I think it's going to be Let me take give a us a lot of payback. Let me take a different approach to it, uh, Mike. And I really think, I mean, you think of ourselves, we are in, uh, in a spacecraft called planet Earth and we are swinging around the space and we have a single point of failure. So imagine if we get hit by an asteroid, the whole humanity will die. And if you don't believe me, ask any dinosaur, they'll tell you, it's just no fun. <laughs> They're probably all rolling in their graves <laughs> thinking, wasn't there any entrepreneur dinosaur, they could have taken them to the moon <laughs> and saved them, right? Mm -hmm. But really, you know, in some sense, it is, uh, as an entrepreneur, <laughs> what you are trying to do is to move this, you know, as, you know, there's no geographical boundaries that entrepreneurs have. The geographical boundaries are created by politicians. We as entrepreneurs know no geographical boundaries. We come together. So when you look at Moon Express, we are funded by the entrepreneurs from China, the entrepreneurs from Russia. We are funded by entrepreneurs from Europe, the entrepreneurs from India, the America. We all came together because we believe it is something we can all do together. So that we talk about international cooperation, that's where the cooperation comes from. And I really believe that there is absolutely nothing that we can't achieve. So when we go and show what is possible, in some sense we'll be able to create many of the applications that we have never thought about. So when we land on the moon, it is a four minute a mile problem. When someone shows it can be done, there'll be many, many people who are gonna go out, not only do it, they're gonna become, we become the iPhone of the space. And we're gonna build a whole bunch of applications on top of that, whether it could be putting the footprints on the moon, creating a fuel depot, but we still don't know what the angry bird of the moon is going to be. What is the Pokemon Go of the moon? Somebody is going to build that, and it's going to be one of you who's going to build that Pokemon Go of the moon. <laughs> That's perfect. So, <laughs> so <clears throat> I'll definitely play Pokemon Go on the moon for what it's worth. <laughs> so, but it's not just opportunity. It's not just economic opportunity. I mean, we're literally talking about the future of humanity here, right? So uh, let me ask the one question that I'm sure is on everyone's mind here, um, is when do uh, normal people like me get to go to space? When do I get to sign up on Craigslist for a uh, space job? <laughs> well, well, first of all, I'd make the argument that normal people have already gone. I consider myself <laughs> to be a normal person. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, it's just been a, different, it's been a different model. I think the question is, and I want to go back. You know, I'm, not, I'm no longer with NASA, so I've got to, you know, I, hopefully I can get back with you know, one of these other uh, privatization companies or some way to get back, because I want to go back to space too. Um, so, but I think we're really at the brink where that's going to happen. There's been uh, some very successful companies. Uh, SpaceX has been launching cargo to the International Space Station. Now they're working on a crew module to do that, to get people to orbit. Uh, Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos' company, has been very successful in developing new rocket motors and uh, are close to launching people on a suborbital flight on a program called New Shepard, similar to Alan Shepard's flight. Uh, and, you know, uh, Virgin Galactic, this is another example, Richard Branson. So these are three, three very successful entrepreneurs in other areas are turning their attention to space travel. And I think we're very close to the point where they're going to be taking private citizens, people who don't want to be career astronauts. I mean, my... I only spent a few weeks of my life in space. I spent 18 years as an astronaut, but that's why I wanted that career. There are some people that want to go there for a shorter visit, as for, for tourism, for research, for, for their business opportunities. Those are different motivations, and I, those are all great. And I really think, finally, we're at that stage now where we're, we're very close to that happening. And, and I, I think it's not going to be too much longer. I, you know, a couple years, one, within the next year or two, you know, the, there's a few steps forward, a few steps back but I really believe we're on this golden age. I think that's gonna change everything. Mm -hmm. Once these companies are launching people, whether it's in a suborbital flight for tourists, or whether it's in the International Space Station for 
astronauts or research or tourism or whatever it might be, I think it's really going to change everything. It's going to make it accessible, and it, it's, it's going it's to be something that people are going to be able to do, and hopefully the price will come down over the years so it's affordable so more people can so partake. Here's my yeah. prediction. In the next two years, we will be able to go to the suborbital space, and it is going to be both Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic. In fact, me and my son both have a ticket to go on the space. Sure. My prediction is, in the next 10 to 15 years, we're going to take the people to the moon. There are going to be people getting on their knees and asking their sweetie, honey, will you go to the moon with me? <laughs> right? uh, in addition to that, I absolutely believe there are going to be many, many more opportunities for people to experience the space, and the cost of going to the space is going to be fun fundamentally no different than going from LA to Sydney. The cost today for suborbital flight is about $200,000. The cost of going to the moon today is $7 million, and I believe in two years it's going to come down to a couple of million dollars. And when Elon says he's going to take the people to the Mars for $200,000, I believe we can take people to the moon for a couple of thousand dollars. So imagine for a day when you'll be able to go to the moon for a weekend and have fun. And the moon is the best place to actually settle down even before you want to go to the Mars. Because you'd rather be a lunatic three days away than be a Martian stuck for six months, right? <laughs> so it is a good place to settle down, really learn to live off this planet, learn to use the resources on the moon. And the, the beauty of the moon is it has water. And you know what the water is? Hydrogen and oxygen, the rocket fuel and the fuel for humanity. So we'll be able to go out and create the lunar colonies and enjoy there. And one day there is going to be a child born when the parents are going to be sitting next to the kid and saying, kid, look up. We come from that planet. We're going to go and visit our mothership someday. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's a beautiful image. Awesome. So, really good. Hmm. So uh, we're running short on time here. So I just want to ask you each just one really quick question to take us out. Um, what do you guys hope to see in the next 30 years in space? You know, by 2050, what do you hope um, space is going to look like? Um, I, I hope in, you know, in, in the near term we get more people access to space so they can enjoy it. But by 2050, that's a long time from now. And I, and I really do hope that we've been to Mars, that we have some sort of settlement there. I hope we figured out a better, certainly, you know, did the moon, if you're able to mine those resources, I hope you're there <laughs> doing that. And I hope we're beyond that. I hope we're able to, I, I think with some of the, 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 the probes that we have, whether it's Hubble, whether it's satellites, understand more about where we came from, some of those basic questions. Where, how did we get here? Where do we go afterwards? I hope that we've discovered life somewhere else. I mm -hmm. think it's there. I think we just need to find it. So I hope by then we would have found it and maybe someone would have found us. <laughs> and I hope we found a better way to move around so we can go to these places that Hubble shows us and get there and explore as well. That's wonderful. Yeah. So, so how about you, Naveen? So in 2050, we're going to have a boots on Mars, we're going to have a boots on Europa, and we're going to be in multiple, that we are going to be in the moons of Jupiter and moons of Saturn, and we're going to find the extraterrestrial life, and we're all going to live peacefully together. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> Well, thank you all very much, and thank both of you. Also, um, Mike has a new book, Spaceman Out, so he'll actually be floating around if anyone want to talk to him. Yeah, I'll, be, um, I'll probably books. migrate toward the back if anyone wants to say hi. Uh, be happy to do that. And if anybody wants to go to the moon, I'll be back there, and you can take a <laughs> selfie with me instead of buying his book. <laughs> thank you very much. So, that's good. Take care. Right, <laughs> nice job.